Stitchy Tube. Settle down and watch Stitchy Tube. Hello, Stitchy Tube number 16. Here I am. It's Sunday evening. I was planning on doing it earlier today, and I kind of was out and about the last few days. I kind of wore myself out. I'm still trying to kick this um, illness, which I now believe was influenza B. So that's okay. I'm feeling much better. As always with my video, I'd like to start with the questions that have come in since the last time. Uh, Annie Toth asked uh, for tips on stitching on 40 count. And you know, all know that I like to stitch on 40 count. I think, you know, really one of the great things about stitching on 40 count is not only does it really look very pretty, you can get by with using one strand, which cuts your fabric price in half. Think about it. You're also, your project is... Let me see, what did he get? Oh, it's a, I don't know what that is. Um, it cuts the size of your pro finished project down, and so your framing will be cheaper too, and your fabric is smaller, so your fabric will be cheaper, and you can fit more on your wall. So there's a lot of great things about stitching on 40 count. I have to use cheaters. A couple of years ago, my eyes just went, mm-mm, not gonna do it anymore. And so I just get these at... Dollar General. They're not expensive. And I would recommend if you're going to go get some cheaters to stitch on a count that you're not used to, go ahead and take a piece of that fabric along to the store with you and try on different cheaters. Don't worry. These are plus three. It's just a number. All it means is the strength that you need to see what it is that you're seeing. And um, I let my husband borrow these once fairly recently and he was like, oh my gosh, these are awesome. Where'd you get these? And I went and got him a pair too because they just help. <clears throat> and so uh, cheaters help. Having light over your shoulder or sitting in front of a window helps. Stitching on lighter color fabrics will help you too. But um, 40 count, it's not that much different. And really, once you get used to stitching on it, when I stitch on a count other than 40, I'm like, oh, this is so big and chunky. Because you just get used to looking for the smallness of it. Annie also wanted to know if DMC has a shelf life because I had talked about using some DMC colors that I hadn't used in a long time. And DMC lasts a really good long time. I have DMC in my collection that belonged to my grandmother and she died almost 40 years ago. So, um, you know, to me it's, actually I kind of like running into the older skeins of thread because DMC used to be, I feel like it used to be a little bit softer than it is now. So it's kind of fun to run into an old skein. Myra Lewis wanted to know what the white cabinet is behind me. Those are my anchor cabinets from my floss, uh, from my shop days. And so I actually have four of those. That's two. And the other two are over that way. I'm kind of trying to decide what to do. Uh, my son Graham just moved out this week. That was one of the things I had to run around and do was help him move into his very first apartment with three friends. Very exciting. So his room, which is, uh, wait, that way, in down the hall and then take a left, is... Still has a bunch of his stuff in it. His apartment is furnished, and so his a lot of his furniture is still there. Um, and then Harrison is coming back tomorrow morning from, uh, from a month and a week in France with his girlfriend. And his room is there. Harrison's talking about moving that way. And he probably will be leaving sometime in the next couple of months too, so we'll soon be empty, empty nesters. But um, I'm going to make one of those rooms into a craft room. Uh, so then I, those cabinets will go somewhere else. And I may not film, if I make a craft room, I may start filming my videos from the craft room. I'm not sure. And that's what the white cabinets are. They're very nice. They're metal. And um, the drawers kind of just glide out. They're very, very nice. Okay, Sweet More More wanted to know, is it okay to copy a motif or a verse off of an old sampler that you see? And you have to remember that girls of course copied motifs from samplers that's what they that's what they did is they would go to classes to learn how to stitch and then they would work off of an existing sampler and, and try to reproduce the sampler from the the sampler stitched before and so really you're just doing what's been done for centuries is just using something from the past to make something current so it's typically cool if you see a sampler and you're like, okay, I want to try to reproduce what that looks like on this fabric to make something, right? Or like the verse, and I'm going to copy the verse. The verses often were hymns or poems or passages from the Bible, that kind of thing. What's not okay is to copy a sampler, like reproduce a sampler 
that doesn't belong to you and then sell that pattern. And any of the samplers that I've reproduced have all been samplers that I have purchased. I haven't reproduced a sampler that's belonged to somebody else. It has happened and it tends to make the sampler purchaser a little bit angry if they find out that the thing that they own has been used by somebody else to make a profit. There are a lot of sampler reproducers who will contact a museum or a private sampler owner to find out if it's okay for them to reproduce a sampler in exchange for, you know, donation, money, some other kind of compensation, recognition, that kind of thing. And that's how you would go about it. But if you're just using it for your own purpose to make something, remember that there are, you go to the Louvre or you go to any museum, you're going to find artists, you know, trying their best to reproduce what they see on the walls. And it's just kind of the same idea that you're, you're taking a piece of art and trying to make it your own. Um, I did have <coughs> somebody contact me and she said, hey, you know, you, you talked about putting, you talked about putting rice in some of your pin cushions. Um, rice can attract pests, mice especially. So if you put rice in your pin cushions, don't forget that you can attract mice. It reminded me of a story from a couple of years after we moved here. Back, I don't know, like 10 years ago, we noticed that we had a mouse in the house and we hadn't had a mouse before. We didn't have cats at that point. We just had a dog and she was really dumb, but she was very nice, but she didn't know. So anyway, we had this mouse that we were seeing sometimes and it wasn't crazy. Like it wasn't chewing holes in our walls. It's just, we would just sometimes see it run past and we're like, what? And I don't like to kill things. So I went and got a live trap and it was kind of a seesaw type of an affair where, where it would go like this and you would put peanut butter up inside this little tube and the mouse would run in and then the tube would tip like that and then a door would slap shut. So then you could take the mouse and, and take it outside without killing it, without hurting it. Plus it got a peanut butter treat. So I caught it like quickly and took it out front across the street where there was woods and opened it and the mouse came out and he literally, I'm not kidding, he looked up at me and then made a beeline for our house, just like ran straight back to our house. And I'm like, oh my Lord, I caught him again, another day, took him out. And then we saw him again. I'm like, what in the world? So then one night at like two o'clock in the morning, Harrison comes running in my room. He's like, you know, 18 or years old or something. And he says, mom, 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 there was a mouse in my room and it ran, it ran across my bed and it ran into one of my shoes and I caught it in my shoe and it's in this shoe right now. So I said, okay, let's, let's get in the car. So we're in our pajamas. He's in his boxers. I'm in my pajamas. We get in the car, we drive away and um, let the mouse out several blocks from here. And so we were like, oh, okay, okay. And I said, oh shoot, you know what? I should have checked the trap just to see if anything was in the trap. Sure enough, we got home. There was also a mouse in the trap. We got back in the car with the mouse in the trap. We took it out a couple blocks away, dropped it off in the woods, came back. And then we were like, oh, okay, that was, you know, that was exciting. That was a lot of, you know, rigmarole at two o'clock in the morning. I said, good night, Harrison. And I turned around to go back to bed and out of the corner of my eye, I see Bee's water dish. And I think, oh, Bee dropped food in her water dish again. And I look and in Bee's water dish, there is a mouse swimming laps in the water dish. So I'm like, oh my gosh. And I, I grab up the the water dish and I put a plate on top of it and then I drained it in the sink so that the mouse would stay inside but the water would go out because I didn't want it to drown and we took that out to the woods and let that mouse go and we caught two more mice and then that was it so there were five mice in here and we never really could figure it out because it was just that one time and we never haven't had them didn't have them before haven't had them since so then several months go by and I say Graham let's clean out your closet and in his closet is his bag of Halloween candy. And it is like a parade, like the aftermath of a parade in there with just sparkly shreds of everything everywhere. And I don't know, a mouse got in and probably told some friends like, hey, huge party in Graham's room. They were eating all the candy. I'm sure they were like, oh, this is the mother load. But anyway, that was it. That's why they were here. Darlene Baumgartner and Tammy Fulce wanted to know if I had an update on the S. Ward pashmina sampler. And I have the threads here now, 
but I'm waiting for the fabric to make its way through customs and it's in customs right now so we're just waiting on some paperwork and so as soon as that fabric gets here I can kit these up and let you guys know when you can get the sampler kit but we're almost there I'm very excited okay last time I did a giveaway for this chart Quaker sampler by Elizabeth Rowland and it is an older chart I don't know what year it's from but uh to enter the giveaway you had to say what your favorite fruit was or, or vegetable or something that you absolutely would not put in your mouth and it was really fun to read all of your comments and it's kind of fun to see like people some people it's like okay I hate um, Brussels sprouts I hate Br Brussels sprouts was a common thing but there were people that said that that was their favorite thing Beth Smyra is the winner and she said without a doubt her favorite fruit or veggie whatever you want to call it is tomatoes and it's hard to argue with that logic tomatoes are great especially when they come out of your garden when I was a girl I remember we would go pick them and then while they were still warm we would slice them up put them on a plate and put a little bit of sugar on them those big beefsteak tomatoes oh, so good and so it was really fun to read all of your comments Beth please uh, contact me at my email address which will be in the comments below let me know your uh, address your mailing address and I will mail you your chart congratulations I have had a lot of people contact me this last week about the um, the bogus chart that I bought on eBay a week and a half ago and I just wanted to give you an update on what's going on and just kind of give you some information in case you're facing a similar situation you may remember I bought this chart on eBay as a buy it now and when I received it I noticed whoop, that there is a sticker stain that is actually printed onto the chart it's totally smooth the chart has like very crisp corners it's very clean it's not scratched it's a very good fake chart like I would if it, if that hadn't been there I may not have noticed but it's for a 25 year old chart it is in brand new condition and also here you can see the original fold lines of the chart are also actually printed onto the chart and so I have contacted eBay I did it I did a filed a case and then I also called them too to talk to them about it to get some advice I contacted Hoffman distributing they are the only company anymore that is allowed to reproduce this pattern and they said this pattern has not they have not sold a copy of this pattern since 2005 I think he said and so it is not it is not one that someone should have multiple copies of you wouldn't think this seller sells one and then lists it again and then sells that one and lists it again and it seems like there's kind of an endless supply of these out of print charts in this one eBay store you can look at any sellers sale history and see what they've been selling and this person only sells out of print eBay charts I really should have looked before I bought it I didn't even think about it my plan right now is to hang on to the chart I offered to send it to Hoffman in case they wanted to use it for when they contacted eBay they this is not the first time they've had to do it and so um, he has he, they have a letter that they send out and if eBay determines that these are fake that they will take the store down this person also has an Etsy store is what I hear and so just really be careful if you think you have bought a fake and you have questions or you want to just add to the information I am sending another file of information to eBay about this case they have not had a complaint about this seller yet and this seller has hundreds and hundreds of sales of these charts so I'm the first one I, according to them I'm the first one to say anything I don't know if that's true or not but I'll let you know just just email me if you've got questions or if you want to let me know something a lot of people didn't feel comfortable doing it in the comments and I totally understand that all right it's a quick sip calorie free Dasani flavor <clears throat> I wanted to talk about uh, fibers and I'll do a list of 10 I haven't done a list of 10 for a little while and I thought it would be cool to just talk about 10 of my favorite kinds of threads to use and tell a little bit about them these are in no particular order and these are I have used every single one of these brands of threads in my designs at some point some I use more than others but not really I mean I try to really mix it up I like everybody and when I asked people a couple of videos ago like what's your favorite thread there were a number of people that said how do you pick a favorite and it's true there are so many great threads and they all have different properties that make them great for certain things I'm going to start with a Verisois and this is a silk thread that comes out of France it comes in a little skein like this that is seven ply I want to make sure I get this right five meters 
or you can get 45 meter hanks. And a lot of stores will order those in for you if you need to use a lot of black or a lot of white or cream or brown or green or purple, whatever color it is that you need. And it's more economical that way. A five meter skein runs in the $4 to $4.50 range. For seven ply, the 45 meter hanks are about $35-ish. And so um, that's a good value. It's uh, out of France. A verisois means of the silk worm. The silk of the worm, I think, is what it means. And um, soie d'Alger, I think Alger is like, has to do with a process of making the silk. And soie just means silk. This company was founded in 1820. And right now they have 623 colors. The cool thing is, is that I read on their website in 1890, in 1890, they had 2,688 different colors that you could buy in collections of 140 colors at a time. Like that 3,000 colors. It's funny to me because a lot of times I'm like, think about how many options we have these days. We have so many different threads and blah, blah, blah. 3,000 colors of silk from one company. That is crazy. I really like a Verisua because it gives you really nice coverage. One strand is plenty on 32, 36, 40 count over two um, because it, it's, a thicker, it's a thicker silk. It's almost kind of squeaky. It's very soft and the colors are really, really nice. It's strong. I don't find that it frays. Um, and it kind of resists that kind of fuzzy look to me, to me. Everybody's, you know, everybody has different experiences, but to me it doesn't, it doesn't knot up. It's just very, very nice to work with. If you have ever stitched a Shepherd's Bush kit that came with silks, you've probably used a Vera Soie or Soie d'Alger. That's what they use in a lot of their kits. And um, uh, Scarlet Letter does her reproductions, I think. I mean, I think almost all of them she's done in, in a Verisois. And so you've used them if, if you've done those kits. But it's a great, great company. Been around for, gosh, almost 200 years now, I guess. So that's what that is. Needlepoint silks. Come in little skeins like this. These are five meters. And they're $5-ish for a skein. But if you want to get a 45 meter hank, it's $32-ish, depending on where you get it. Again, a, th a, a hank is often a special order from a store, but a lot of stores are happy to get them in for you. It's a much better buy. There are 476 colors of needlepoint silks, which is a lot of colors too. These come out of California. The company is in California and they have a great website. I'll put the websites below so you can go check out these companies if you want to. Some of them you can buy from... Uh, retail and some of them you'll have to find a retailer that carries the threads. Kathy Barrick uses a lot of needlepoint silks. Compared to a Verisua, needlepoint silks are just a little bit thinner. Um, but again, it's a silk and so it's very strong. It's an eight ply thread. Um, lots of great colors and, and everything from like vibrant, vibrant colors to kind of, you know, dull, muted, primitive colors. There's just really a great range for these. And um, this, it's just, it's a great thread. It's a great thread. Okay, Gloriana is a great little company too. And Anne Overdyes Silks, this is a 12-ply silk. It comes on a card like this. You get, what is this? Six yards. It's a French silk. And they're variegated you know like we'll you'll get a color that's over dyed and it'll kind of like this one is just kind of gentle variegation where it just subtly changes colors but she also has threads that wildly change colors and so you get a lot of different colors in the same skein it's shiny it tends not to catch on things i find it to be a very strong thread the colors are beautiful the names are really cool um, these are about seven ish dollars depending on where you get them um no no wait a minute these are $8-ish for this. She has another thread that's called Floramel that we use for cross-stitching too. And that's used, that uses an Averisois base. And so with that one, you get five yards and it's seven ply, just like Averisois. And it's $7-ish. These are $8-ish. Great colors, runs the gamut anywhere from primitive to, wow, that's really colorful. Jeanette Douglas tends to use a lot of Gloriana. I've used them too. They're great threads and Anne just really couldn't be nicer. And she has a bunch of other types of threads. This is one that I just really like to use and I have a pretty good collection of it. Okay, 
Thread Gatherer Silken Colors. It also comes, it's, it's very similar, you know, in, in look and, and feel to the Gloriana. They come on five yard skeins now. I think this one is actually when she used to do six yards. Um, what she has done to kind of keep the price of a skein down is just bumped how much you get down as the price of silk goes up. Because a lot of times you really don't need that much. This company was started in 1991. She's out of Idaho. I read on her website that um, the first year that she was in business, she had one sale. <laughs> and now she's used by stitchers everywhere. Shepherd's Bush also uses a lot of thread gatherer silks too. And I think Cecile does a lot of retreats with them. If you get an over dyed silk in a Shepherd's Bush kit, this is probably what it is, is the silken colors. She has a great website that you can buy direct from her. And she also has an Etsy store. And <clears throat> the cool thing about the Etsy store is she a lot of times will have limited edition colors that you can get for, I think, $5 ish. So rather than eight, $8, which it normally is, is in the $8 range, it's $5. It's a limited color. And some of them are really, really neat. And I need to go check her out and see if there are any that I need to get because they're just really cool. Uh, she has always done kind of limited edition colors. She's got a really great, and does too from Gloriana. But it's just fun to see everybody's different kind of color styles. I remember that the Thread Gatherer back, gosh, probably 15 years ago or so, she had a limited edition thread pack that was called Menopausal Moments. And all of the threads were named after menopause themed. I, I, the only one I really truly remember is one that was called Hot Flash. And I think it was like reds and yellows or something like that. And um, I think it was $40 and it maybe came with like, I don't remember, six skeins or something. And um, it just gave me such a giggle because I just thought it was funny and clever. And people were like, oh my, that's so shocking. That's, you shouldn't talk about that. It's like, oh, come on, it's just fun. And um, I didn't keep any for myself. I really should have, but that was, I just thought that was, shows a very good sense of humor. Okay, so that's Thread, uh, thread Gatherer Silken Colors, 12 ply. So, okay, next. <clears throat> See if you recognize this thread. DMC, DMC. We all use DMC. We all use DMC. We all use DMC. Um, when a couple of videos, I asked, what's your favorite brand of thread? And people were like, oh, I really like Gloriana. I really like Victorian Motto. And I just got Victorian Motto, so I'm not including it in this list because I haven't tried it yet. Um, but some people, a lot of people were like, oh, I just, I only use DMC because that's, I just, I only use DMC. Don't feel bad if you use DMC. Everybody uses DMC. See on the floor right there? That's, D that's my collection of DMC. Everybody uses DMC. That company has been around since 1746. Everybody uses DMC. It's the standard. If you're going to see a chart and it's stitched in anything other than DMC, almost always there's a DMC conversion. There's a reason for that. <laughs> it is a very popular thread that is easily accessible. It's inexpensive. It's a good quality. DMC is a is a um, Egyptian cotton based thread, and so Egyptian cotton fibers are typically longer fibers than other types of cotton, which means it makes for a strong thread because as they twist it, there's just more area for those threads to grab onto each other and stay twisted together. So it's it makes for a strong thread. <clears throat> uh, DMC stands for Dolphus Mieg and Company, which those were the names of the founder, his wife and then Ann Company, and his name was Daniel Dolphus and Anne Marie Mieg. And so that's what DMC stands for, just in case you didn't know. You get eight meters, which is about the same as 26 and a quarter feet. It is, you know, anywhere from 50 cents-ish now to 75 cents-ish. Um, our Walmart has it again. They didn't for a while. It is color fast. It is fade resistant. DMC says that you can wash it frequently so you can wash it more than once up to 95 degrees celsius or 203 degrees fahrenheit which is kind of amazing i have washed it i don't know that i've ever had dmc run for a while there nothing was really claimed to be color fast it's always good to be careful i don't necessarily wash i don't necessarily wash my needlework just depends um so 50, 50 to 75 cents, I know that sometimes Joann's will do it for 33 cents or whatever. I remember there was a Kmart once that was going out of business and it was six cents a skein. 
And at the time, this would have been back in like 1992-ish maybe, I was like, oh, these are all the icky colors. And they're totally the kind of colors I use now. All the like olive greens and rust and should have bought that Sixth Sense DMC. I have a lot of DMC even that belonged to my grandma and it's, it's just really cool because sometimes I feel like it, it, was, it used to be smoother back in the day. <coughs> um, they say that you can pull up, you know, you just start pulling on this to, to pull out your length and they recommend an 18 inch length to work with. And then when you pull off of that, the way to do it is to, um, and this is with any thread, I do this with any thread, you get the, you get the thread like this and you tap it. And then you can see that the strands kind of separate. If the strands don't separate, flip your thread over and tap the other end and see if they separate. And then you just grab one of those, hold the thread and just pull that length. And I will, if I'm using two ply, I pull them out two separately and then put them together and thread them through my needle. Otherwise, sometimes they're twisted around each other and you don't get a very nice look on your, on your fabric. So that's the technique that I use. I used to, when I started, you know, pull, I'd get a length and I'd pull from the middle and everything would snarl up. Really pulling from the end makes a huge difference. Okay, so that's DMC. 489 colors. I remember, I remember back in the day, back in my day, they had 360 colors. And so 489 is just crazy. And everybody uses it. It's a great thread. Um, I also really like Anchor Floss which is uh, made by the Coates Company, which has been around a good long time too. Let me see if I found out. 1750s is when this company started. So DMC and the Coates Company really got started about the same time. DMC is out of France. Anchor is out of Scotland is where Anchor was started. It's really a great thread too. The difference that I find between Anchor and DMC is I find Anchor to be just slightly thicker and so I find that I get slightly better fuller coverage um, with Anchor Floss. And there are a lot of, if you, if you want to try Anchor, there are a lot of conversions online where you can find out, you know, what would be the closest substitute from Anchor to DMC. Surprisingly, you know, it used to be, oh, DMC is so much cheaper and everybody used it. I mean, really anymore, Anchor Floss is 70 cents-ish, depending on where you get it. And so it's really not that much more expensive you get 8.8 .8 yards, so you get slightly more. It is an Egyptian cotton again. Um, and let's see what else. They have 460 colors. So DMC has 489, Anchor has 460, so they're pretty close, same number of colors. It is washable also, and um, it's really a great thread. I enjoy it. Okay, sampler threads come on a card like this, and I remember seeing sampler threads for the first time uh, at the Cross Stitchery in La Crosse, Wisconsin. It was my local needlework store. It was about a 35 minute drive from my house. I had never seen it before. I'd always stitched with DMC or and Krynik were the two threads that I had ever used. And so I went to this store and they had a tiny little selection of these over dyed threads. And I was like, what are those? And she told me and I was like, that is the coolest thing ever. And I even, I don't, I don't think I still have it anymore. I got so inspired by these threads that I made a design on graph paper of some pumpkins that I think I gave to my mom. My son Harrison drew three pumpkins and I converted it into cross stitch and made my mom a little piece out of it with the, with the threads. And I sent the gentle art a copy of that chart and said, hey, your threads inspired me so much that I made this little chart of pumpkins. And they sent me back a nice note that said, thank you for using our threads. If you ever decide to design, let us know. And so it's just funny because I did end up designing, but um, they were started in, I think 1991 is about when the sampler thread company started. They have 200 plus colors now. I think it's like 221 or something like that. I want to say they started off with just like, you know, it's like 14 colors or 21 colors or something like that, but they just really have exploded. They release new colors a couple times a year. It's always been fun to see what their new colors are. They are hand over dyed threads again. And remember over dyed just means that you're dyeing a color over a thread that was previously another color. And so that color could have even been white. It could be you're adding purple to a previously white thread. That's over dyeing. And so that's what they do. They are color fast. However, um, you know, my, my sampler thread collection is various and I've, I've been collecting them for a long time now, you know, 20, 20 years ish. And so, 
I, I have had them bleed and um, they weren't always colored fast. So I'm just always really, I'm always really careful with threads. With the sampler threads, I'm really careful just because I, I did have them bleed a time or two. But um, they say that they're color fast now. I just, I just still try to be really careful. You get six, it's a strict six strand floss, five yards. But you can get 10 yard skeins too. And a lot of people don't realize that. Everybody gets the five yard skeins, which are around $2.50. But like for $3.50, you can get twice as much. And so <coughs> as a shop, I always carried the five yard skeins. I think if I was a shop these days, I would just get the 10 yard skeins because it's so much cheaper per yard and you're going to use it. Um, so people get confused too because they're like, okay, but so the gentle art, how is that different from sampler threads? And what is Simply Shaker? The gentle art is the name of the company. And then they have two lines of these cotton flosses that are called sampler threads and Simply Shaker. And Simply Shaker is a line of threads that are kind of like muted primitive colors. And then the sampler threads, there's kind of more of a wide variety of colors. And um, the, they're all lovely, but they're, it's the same base thread and a lot of shops just have them mixed together. So that's the difference. To me, one of the cool things about sampler threads is that batch to batch, there is variation. So if you get sampler threads today and then you buy, you have threads from five years ago, the colors may be quite different. And I think that's cool. I think that's cool because they are hand dyed and there is going to be variety. And they even recommend on the Gentle Arts website that you save different skeins that are different colors. And that if you're stitching a piece to use lengths from different skeins for the same piece, because it'll make it really look like an antique or a very primitive sampler. I like that variety. Some people don't. But I guess you just have to say like, you know, you either have to get enough to finish your project or you have to say like, hey, that's what it, you know, this is a hand dyed product. This is, that's what happens sometimes when you have things that are handmade is that they, they vary. I like it. Weak Style Works. Everybody knows about Weak Style Works. They come on a different card um, like that. And they've been around since 1994. They're out of North Carolina. Miranda's very nice and she's been, you know, she, I think she has a degree in textiles or something, clothing. I can't remember. They've got hundreds of colors. And again, this is just like the sampler threads. It is a six ply cotton floss. You get five yards. They do not have 10 yard skeins. They have five yard skeins. These are color fast threads. Again, I would be careful if you have older ones. It's an Egyptian cotton that's over dyed once again. They don't do limited edition threads like the Gentle Art does. Gentle Art often will do limited edition singles throughout the year, and then they'll do packs where it's like these colors, you know, either we had a batch that didn't turn out the way we wanted, or we're experimenting with new colors, or we're just dyeing some, you know, random colors to just make limited editions. Um, Weak Style Works doesn't do limited editions. They do have colors that people will refer to as retired colors where, um, you know, like white chocolate I know is one and beehive is one, which is kind of cool. They're not retired, retired. They have, Weeks Dye Works has a, has a form on their website that shows the colors that are not retired, that are just kind of like the main colors. And this is what a lot of shops will stock. However, any of the colors that they have made in the past are still available. So if you have a, an old chart that calls for foxglove, uh, or Cape Cod, I think is one that might be retired. There are, are there a bunch of retired colors. They're still available. Your, your store can order them for you from Weeks Dye Works. And I think some of those colors could make a comeback because I think some of them really are, are really kind of cool colors that are, go with a lot of what we're doing these days. Um, Weeks Dye Works, to me, is very consistent from batch to batch to batch. And so I liked that too. I liked that I could count on it to match every single time that it comes in. And um, to me, it's just, it's a very consistent thread. The variegation is more pronounced where you really can see the gradation, is that a, is that a word? Um, of, the, of the fibers that you can see the colors fade and, and strengthen and fade and strengthen. And she's got colors that are multiple colors in the same skein too, and those are called the Holiday Collection. And then she has some colors too that are just flat colors, that where it's just a black. Okay, so that's Weeks Dye Works. Those are, 
I think in the $2.50 range too. And I think that's all I needed to say about that. Okay, <coughs> I'm almost done. Uh, Classic Color Works used to be called Crescent Colors. And this company was taken over by um, Diane Williams' family from Little House Needleworks. Sharon Crescent was the one who uh, founded the company. And I remember getting them in and thinking, oh, this is a big, do I want to add another line of threads? As a shop, it's always kind of stressful to like see a new line and you're like, okay, are enough people going to use these threads that you are going to want to stock them? And they're, they're amazing. They're cool. Um, again, you've got a five yard skein of six strands. It's in that two dollar two dollar and 25 cent range so the same range um, very soft thread very nicely dyed not color fast they will they tell you on on their website this, this is and on the and right on the tag not color fast so please be careful with these it doesn't mean that it will run it just means that it may run and um, country cottage needleworks and little house needleworks use a lot of these threads but a lot of people use them. They're great. Blackbird Designs has used them. A lot, a lot of companies have used them. I've used them too. 247 colors of this. And I find that they have a lot of really nice pastels and soft colors. And they're just, they're really nice threads. They're very nice to work with. They're really soft going through the um, fabric. And that company is based out of Arizona. And so these, you can't buy them directly from the Classic Color Works company, but your shop owner can get them if, if your shop owner doesn't already stock them. And a lot of needlework stores just stock the classic color works too. Okay, last thread is Belsoi. And this is the same company as the classic color works. And this is a like $7.80-ish for a skein. It is a 12-stranded silk, five yards. It's soft. It's gently variegated and it's a little bit thinner. There are some inconsistencies batch to batch with this thread. It doesn't make it bad. It's a wonderful thread. It's very nice to work with. It, I do find it to be a little bit thinner than some of the other over dyed threads, which is nice because sometimes you're working on a fine linen and you want that really soft, soft look. It is very, anytime someone hasn't felt Belle Soie before, um, they're like, oh, oh, this it feels so good. And it does feel very nice. They skein theirs like this, which I seem to remember Sharon Crescent telling me once that she felt that not twisting it was better for the thread. I don't know if that's true. And I'm not, I'm not going to say that that's true, but that was a reason that you see these loose like this instead of wound like this. I haven't, I haven't had trouble with any of these flosses because of the twisting. I'm just saying they just, they come loose, loose like that. Okay, so those are 10 threads that I really like to use. Here's the exciting thing. All those threads that I just showed, I'm going to give away as my giveaway this week. And so if you win the giveaway, you're going to get all the skeins that I just showed. So 10 different kinds of threads. That way you can try some threads that you've never tried before. So the um, question is, what project are you working on this week? Don't say giveaway. Um, don't say freebie. Uh, please be 18 so you can give me your address. But in the comments below, just say, just say something about what you're working on this week. And if you're not working on anything this week, if you're taking a break, you can say that too and it still counts as an entry. And then next time I make a video, I will draw and you will win those threads and I'll send those to you in the mail. So that's my giveaway this week. Okay. <coughs> cheap and cheerful. So last time's cheap and cheerful was for you to try a new fruit or vegetable. And I didn't have as many people participate in that that I know of. I didn't see a lot of pictures on Instagram. I did have a few people message me and tell me, you know, like I tried, tried endive this week or endive. And so I think it's cool that you're trying new things. This week's cheap and cheerful. I know everybody's going to be able to do this. Send someone a card or a letter. I feel like we used to send cards and letters. I used to do it so much more frequently. My husband and I were dating and in college, we were separated by 70 miles that first year and a half that I went to school and then I transferred to go to school with him. But we used to send each other a letter every day and sometimes twice a day. And that's back when stamps were like 20 cents or 22 cents or something like that. But I feel like, you know, we have Instagram and we have Facebook and we have email and we have text messages and we just don't always send fun mail anymore. And it used to be so fun to get the mail. And now you go get the mail and it's like bill, bill, junk, bill, wrong address, bill, 
It's not that fun, is it? It's so fun to go to the mailbox and see like a handwritten pink or purple envelope where you're like, oh, this is actually like, this is, <laughs> this is nice mail. And so you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a card or buy stationery. Try to use something that you have at your house. I know we've all got stationery and cards and postcards and things to use. And so my challenge this week to you is to send a card or a letter to somebody. It could be a friend. It could be a family member. It could be to somebody that you regularly communicate with or someone you haven't talked to in a long, long time. Take a picture. You can kind of make it artsy if you want to. Take a picture of the card you're sending or you can take a picture of the, you know, envelope and some stickers or whatever it else it is that you're doing and um put put it on instagram uh to k-s-c-a-c so hashtag k-s-c-a-c which stands for kitten stitcher cheap and cheerful and so it might be fun to see a lot of different styles of stationery and cards this week and um let's all inspire each other to reach out to somebody the old-fashioned way and actually put something in the mailbox Cool stamps are a bonus if you have a cool stamp. And the Mr. Rogers stamps, I think, are still available. So that is cheap and cheerful. I've got two show and tell this week. I wanted to show this one. It hangs in my laundry room, and it's kind of coming up on that time. This is uh, a design that I created, I don't know when. It's been a while, quite a long time. Sam socks, shorts, and such, and I did it um, through Raise the Roof Designs. I had a series of clotheslines that I created. And this is Uncle Sam's, um, you can see he's got his jacket with a little rose on his lapel, some funky star-spangled pants, some red and white striped boxer shorts, some long socks. This is a quilt, like a red, white, and blue quilt. He's got his laundry basket here with a bag of clothespins some Adidas style sneakers, a drum, an eagle. There's a red, white, and blue chicken button. Here's his hat up on the pole and some red, white, and blue flowers. This one was really fun to stitch. I believe it's on 32 Count Meadow Rue by Lakeside Linens. Um, I really enjoy this one. This to me is one of my favorite designs um, under Raise the Roof that I ever did. It was very fun to stitch and I really, really enjoy it. My friend Jen at Jen's Stitching Niche, and I'll put a list down there, <coughs> has the um, charts and the button packs from just another button company and Julie at Gulf Coast Stitches. I'll put a link to her shop too. She's got the charts as well. I don't know if she carries the buttons yet, but check those shops out if you'd like to get that chart. It's fun to stitch and we're coming up on the 4th of July. We're not so far. Last week, um, Primitive Stitcher. Why can't I think of her name? Her name just flew out of my head. Primitive Stitcher. can't think of her name. Uh, I sent her a surprise in the mail. She, I let her borrow um, some charts of mine that she hadn't been able to find that she wanted some Blackbird designs. But I also sent her a copy of this reproduction chart uh, that this is a, an antique sampler of mine that I reproduced. It is called the Mary Bates Sampler. It was stitched in 1796. Let's see if I can get it to where it's not too glary. And so this is the actual sampler. She showed the chart, and I was never happy with the covers on that chart because it kind of reproduced kind of kind of dark, um, the photograph did. And I got this one on eBay from somebody who found it at a flea market or like an estate sale or something. I didn't pay very much for it. I think it's very, very pretty. It's very soft, kind of dusty sages and rose, and there's like a little bit of like a pale burgundy, and then these black letters. It even has the date, so she's, it says, um, Mary Bate, her work in the year of our Lord, 1796. Um, it says born October 29th of 83. So she would have been 13 when she made this. And then down here, it says straight school. So it's even got the name of the school that she was at. This is the first sampler I've ever, um, framed with the border showing. I just thought I'd try it for something different. This is what their the edges of their samplers looked like. They didn't have a lot of extra, you know, we have like three inch inches or sometimes four inches of extra fabric around the sides. They did not have that. And you can see here's the selvage edge of her linen here and here. That's as wide as her fabric was. And so um, the verse on this one is what I think is really cool. And I'll read it to you. I'm going to look at it though because I don't I don't have it quite memorized. So it says, the human soul, and I think this would be good for an educator. I think this is a good sampler for a teacher. The human soul without education is like marble in the quarry, which shows none of its inherent beauties 
until the skill of the polisher fetches out, makes the col uh, fetches out the colors, makes the surface shine, and discovers every ornamental cloud spot and vein that runs through the body of it. So that's saying like the teacher is the one that's going to shine up that shine up that that person. Education after the same manner, when it works upon the mind, draws out to view every latent virtue and perfection, which without such helps are never able to make their appearance. So it's basically saying like you'll never be, without education, you'll never be the person that you could be. Keep such company as you may improve or that may improve you. And if you or your companions cannot make one another better, rather leave than grow worse by them. So don't hang out with anybody that's not making you a better person. I just, th I think to me, the verse on this one is what, what did it for me is that it's a very cool verse and it's, it's very modern in a lot of ways, but it's also very timeless. And so I just wanted to show the sampler. It's in really pretty good shape. The ground linen you can see is pretty, you know, kind of creamy and not too discolored. And there really aren't, you know, other than the edges being a little torn, this came to me like this. It didn't come mounted on anything. Other than the edges being kind of torn, it's really in pretty good shape for being, what is that? 1796, 218, 22 years old, 222. So that is available also at Jen's Stitching Niche. I don't know if Julie's got it. I think she might, but you can check her shop out too. It is available too through Hoffman Distributing. If you have a shop or if you have a local shop that you like to use, they can order it through Hoffman. <coughs> so that's my show and tell. Now it's time to talk about Stitch Mania. It is mania. Sometimes I'm like, why on earth am I doing this? It's fun though, but it's, it's, it is crazy. It's like every day I've got this extra chore I have to do. Well, yesterday my husband and I went to dinner in a movie and I'm like by the time I got home, it was almost midnight and I'm like, okay, what can I start <laughs> that will just be like not that big of a project? And I started last night, I started this, which is a little, um, a little shepherd's bush, um, boop, one of those cards. <laughs> I didn't want to show the whole thing because it's, it's the actual card, but it's one of these little bookmarky cards. And I think you can still get this one. It's just got a little bird, um, coming out of a pot. And I'm going to actually make that into a bookmark. I have never stitched, I've never stitched a cross stitch bookmark. So why not do it? I also started um, two days ago this Animal Crackers series, Henrietta. I got all inspired and I'll tell you why later. But um, I'm stitching it on 40 count instead of 35. And right now I'm just stitching just that her dress. So it's just kind of back and forth and back and forth. But it's with Weeks Dye Works Tarragon, I think, which is a really nice color. And it's not very exciting, but there it is. I like the chicken. I've got um, the little cat too. I think he's very cute. This one is one I don't see people talk about and I've had it in my stash forever and I've meant to start it and put it away. And I, I mean, I've even marked like, do I have the threads? It's Hopeful by Carriage House Samplings. It is still available. I don't know if Hoffman carries it. It can be ordered, I believe, through carriagehousesamplings.com. And it's really a cool pattern. It's farmy and everybody's into farms. But I've always liked this one and it's, you know, kind of long and skinny. And so I started this one on a scrap. I had this piece of fabric that was already this size and it's going to work just perfectly. And that's what I've got done so far. And I think it's very, very funny. And this, that one, I, I'm enjoying that one so far. I'm enjoying it. It's very primitive. This is one that I didn't show you last week because I forgot to bring it to my area here. I'm not going to show you the ones that I've already shown you in previous videos. I'll do like a complete Stitch Mania update at the end of, of May. But this one is by Barbara Anna Designs. I don't have much ready. It's just kind of splotchy so far, little spots. But it's cock a doodle -Doo by Barbara Anna Designs, just in DMC. And it's on a piece of fabric to match my funky bird that I did in my framing tutorial. So I'm going to put this in the same kind of frame and hang them together. And there's one more in that series with another bird that I think I'll do. <clears throat> I've been stitching almost all of my Stitch Mania stuff on 40 count, which is fine because I love stitching on 40 count. But I was like, uh, you know, I'm starting to run out of 28 <laughs> size 28 needles. So I got out this Nest Sweet Nest by just another button company. It's very cute. And it came with the buttons. 
And it's just this little blackbird sitting on a spool with kind of a nest. And then it's got all kinds of cool buttons. And all I've got done so far is a bunch of the blackbird. But I'm stitching it on a piece of 30 count Weeks Dye Works that I had. And it's kind of nice to stitch on something that's a little bit bigger count. They stitch theirs on kind of a greenish yellow fabric. And this is more of kind of like a pale teal, kind of grayish aqua teal color. And I like it a lot. And it matches some of the buttons, so I think it's going to look really nice. Another one that I'm doing is this topper. I have this box. I got it at Hobby Lobby. And, oh, I forgot. Okay, I got it at Hobby Lobby, and so I was like, I should really just do this because I have, I have the finishing supplies already, and it's not very big, and I'm just stitching this on a scrap of 40-count linen, and that's as far as I've gotten so far. But this one is fun, too, and it's going to stitch up really fast. Remember, I'm doing cumulative stitching, so every day I have to put at least five stitches in something in everything that I've already started, which is crazy. Why are we doing that, Jennifer? Whose idea was that? Whose idea was that? This is another one I decided to start on a chunkier linen. This is on 32 count. Uh, I'm stitching it on a 32 count. This Birds and Berries by Prairie Schooler. This is a, a previously, uh, not expired chart, a previously out of print chart that is now back in print. And I always love this one. And it was always selling for like $50 on eBay. And of course, you only want it when it's $50. So it came out, I bought it. And I'm starting with this one. And I'm going to stitch them in a square like this but all on the same piece of fabric and that's where I am so far and it's very pretty it's very pretty it's in DMC and I'm having fun the fabric is a it's like man or something by stitches and spice and I don't know if this is a fabric that you can still get or not I used to carry it in my shop okay um this is I think the only one that I'm not enjoying and it is Hannah's basket let's see if I can get this out of frame so there's there's what it is and the fabric to me looks kind of grayish but they said that it was stitched on 40 32 count vintage pear which is a greenish and so I'm stitching it on this isn't pear but it's a, a very similar color to pear and I don't like it and so I was thinking, well, I'll just finish it because I've already started it. At this point, I'm feeling like I'm going to restart it because I'm, I'm just not enjoying it. But it's, I, love, I love the piece. I just need to find a better piece of fabric for it. This is another one that I started, Sing a Song of Seasons, also by Blackbird Designs. This was one of my favorite little things that I saw at market, and it's so cute. And again, just a scrap, and this is as far as I've got. It's very pretty. Enjoying that one also. On the 12th, this is the last one, I think. <coughs> Jennifer and I decided to start a Hawk Run piece by Kathy Barrick of Carriage House Samplings. Um, you know, neither one of us had ever started one before, and so we just decided that since there are 12 squares usually in a Hawk Run piece, that we would start it on the 12th. And so this is the one that I started, The Village of Hawk Run Hollow. I think this was the first one that came out. I've always loved it. I've had this chart in my stash forever. The only thing that I may change is this square here. I may not stitch that dark background in. I feel like it's it draws your eye down to this real heavy corner, and I think if I take the background out, that it may look better. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I may change the headstones a little bit too. I haven't decided, but I've got a long time until I'm there. So I started this on a 40 count. I'm stitching it in silks, and if I don't have the actual color, I'm just substituting with something I've got. And this fabric is called Grandpa's Sleeve by X Jude Designs on Etsy. And I'll put a link to her shop below too. So if you wanted to find it, you could. This is 40 count. I think it comes in other counts. I love that it looks like it's been dragged behind a car. I think that's very cool. The thing that I did is I'm actually stitching it on the back of the fabric. This is the more colorful side of the fabric and on screen it doesn't look as rusty as it does in person but it's got like kind of rusty blotches and I liked the more muted look of the back side it's not really much more muted but it is to me and so it just looks like a dirty yucky spotty fabric which is I love it and um, she has another one called grandma's slip and I started a piece on that too it's very cool but her fabric is really nice she uses a, I think she uses a Zweigert base and so it's really just a treat. Um, she's overseas, but the shipping is not expensive, and it's her, her fabrics are really, really cool. 
I remember when I started selling hand-dyed linen on my website, I was carrying the Green Mountain linens, which were so cool. And those were with natural dyes. And I sent somebody a piece of it, and she got it, and she emailed me and said, this fabric is ruined. And I was like, what? And she was like, it's all covered with spots, and like it's all like spotty and splotchy. And I, I let her send it back, of course. You know, not everybody kind of understood what what the hand dyed fabrics were and what they were supposed to look like and so she didn't like it but i i love it the spottier the grungier the better to me okay so that's my stitch mania update having fun um i've haven't missed a day even when i was sick and it's fun it's fun it's fun to start a new piece every day but i'll be glad to not do it anymore because <laughs> i I kind of, some of these I'm like, I would like to finish this, but I, I'm trying to keep starting pieces. So we, Jennifer and I are doing it where we're, we're doing a new piece every day for the whole month. And just, it's, it's mania. They, there's a reason they call it mania. Okay. Uh, stash. I didn't really, I didn't really get, get much of anything this week. I did get this on eBay. A jar of old buttons. We, um, I took training videos at, um, at Barnes and Noble and I always used to get so annoyed because this person would lead you through, it was, you took these tutorials on how to use these different programs that we would use and she never said the T's in the word button. So she would say, click on the sale button. <laughs> and so she would say the word button like 30 times a tutorial. It's like, <coughs> old buttons. I paid $15 for a jar of old buttons. They had spread them out and I saw that there were good ones in here. These are, you know, I think anywhere from early 1900s buttons up until, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s maybe. There was one Ralph Lauren button in there, but otherwise they were pretty grungy, which I like. And so I don't, I don't wash them typically. There was, what I did is I, I sorted through them. I poured them on a cookie sheet. I picked through them to see what all I had. And there are some really great buttons in there that I'll use for finishing. And my button jar is just kind of starting to get empty. And I, I bought those buttons probably, you know, 15 or 18 years ago. And it's just, I'm starting to get down to where I don't have as many. And there's a good, good variety of colors in here too. And some really cool ones. Some that are still on little pieces of card. And um, I got, there were a couple of these like, that were strung together where these are bone. These are buttons made out of bone. So these are old buttons. And then I got some glass buttons too that were strung together, which are really cool. And so just looking at the picture, I could tell that these were kind of the age that I wanted. I don't, I'm not really into buttons, you know, from the eighties or later. It's just a lot of plastic and not that interesting generally, but I like old buttons. I paid $15 for all those buttons. And it's, I mean, that'll get me through a ton of projects. I just think that's really fun. And it came in the in the cool jar, which says, what does it say? Benston beads. String your own costume jewelry. I guess I don't know how old the jar is. I don't I don't know that the jar is very old, but it looks old. And so they're just gonna go on my shelf like that. So I <coughs> sorted them on a cookie sheet, picked through them. I like any that are grungy where it's got like grit that's become like part of the button. But if it just looks dusty, I don't I don't like that. So what I, anything that looked dusty, I want grunge. I want like pasty darkness. <laughs> so anything that just looked dusty, I put in a colander and you know, it was, it was probably, you know, a hundred buttons or so that to me looked just dusty and not, you know, not dirty in a good way. And I put them in a colander and then I ran water over them and put a little dish soap on them and just, you know, kind of agitated them to get just the dust off. And then I blotted them dry and put them back in. So I like to keep the patina. To me, that's really cool. And it will be fun to pick through here. There even are some cool like little, you can see little gingham fabric colored buttons that are kind of frayed and stuff. There's just some really good ones in here. So that was kind of fun. And I'm not necessarily looking for more. I just wanted to kind of replenish my button jar a little bit. Okay, what? Am I all into just a couple of things this week? I am all into blueberries. I'm going to put a picture right here of my husband with some blueberries. 
We had planted blueberry bushes maybe like four or five years ago, and this is the first year that we have had like a bumper crop of blueberries. And there are quite a few blueberries that grow in this area. There are blueberry festivals and there are blueberry farms. They're in our backyard. One of the bushes has just gotten really big and one has kind of stayed small, but we still got blueberries off of it. But we have probably three or four gallons of blueberries. We still have to pick some of them and there are more that are ripening. So it's really fun. I'm going to make, I'm going to freeze some. I'm going to make some blueberry muffins. I'm going to I make a cobbler maybe or a blueberry pie. I kind of, I've been watching some cooking shows with Clarissa Dixon Wright from Two Fat Ladies and she did a show about pigs like um, interesting varieties of pigs for eating in England. And she talked about lard crusts and she made like a pie of some sort with a lard crust. And I've never done that before. And I might, I might try it. I don't know. Maybe I'll just do butter. I don't know. But a blue, homemade blueberry pie would be amazing with our own blueberries. Uh, but they're very good. They're very good, very blueberry-y. I'm all into empty nesting, and it was just for a couple of days. Graham moved out on Wednesday. It is now Sunday, and Harrison comes back in the morning. I have to be in New Orleans at 8 a.m. to pick him up at the airport. But so we had f like five days with no children in our house. And Steve and I got married at 20. We had Harrison when we were 21. I'm 48. I've had 27 years of children in my house. You know, and I thought like, oh, I'll be, you know, barely 40 when I'm empty nesting. Nope. <laughs> nope. Well, actually not really though. 45, I think is when I thought, because Graham is just 21 now. And, and um, he moved out. He's very excited. He was very nervous. He's in a uh, four bedroom kind of student type apartment. It's furnished with three other of his friends. Everybody's got separate leases. They're doing a good job. They're doing their laundry. They're doing the dishes. They're playing games. Yes, the other day, yesterday I went over and they were playing games on a card table. And um, so it's just, it's really cool. But it's, you know, I was telling Graham, he said, well, how is it not having kids in the house? And I said, it's nice. It's not markedly different because our children are, you know, relatively quiet and well-behaved and, and very, very nice, sweet young men. But it's just like, there's just like this, like a little bit of freedom. I don't know. I can't explain it. It's, I'm not sad. Like I'm excited. I'm excited for Graham. It's a big adventure. Harrison comes home from France tomorrow and then um, he's going to see if he can, he and Christiana can actually move over there and teach English as a second language. So he may go far, far away, but I mean, we're by no means empty nesters. We have a whole bevy of cats. And um, so that is, we got that going on. I'm all into group me which is an app that you can download for your phone for free. My family and I use it, my siblings and my mom and dad and I use it to kind of just keep a running conversation going on. You can send each other pictures, videos, links from the internet, comments. You can add hearts to things, reply to things. It's kind of like having your, your own family, like Facebook page, but on your phone. So you can, you know, update it from anywhere. And it's just been kind of a nice way for us to just kind of be silly with each other and keep each other updated and send pictures and, and updates and things. And so it's called Group Me, and I, I believe it's free. I think it's free. Uh, the last thing that I'm into is baby chickens. Oh, I want some baby chickens. But here's the, here's the thing. Um, it's better to have a friend with baby chickens because Jennifer got baby chickens this last week. And they're going to be egg layers and they built a new, you know, place for their chickens that they're going to be protected inside, you know, some, some very high fencing. And, and so hopefully they'll stay well protected, but they just come in the mail. If you've never, if you ever wondered like how you get baby chickens, you order them on a website and they send them in the box the day they hatch, they just all show up. And it was just a tiny little box and there were a dozen baby chickens in this little box. And I'm going to put some video right here so you can see what the baby chickens look like. Look at all the little baby chickens. Little baby chickens. Little baby chickens. What are you guys doing? Bark, 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 bark. It was so fun. It was so fun to hold them and um, just watch them run around and be crazy. And they're so cute. 
And she got different varieties. Some of them are gonna have fuzzy feet. They all they kind of have personality and they take a nap all in a big pot, chicken pile. Her father was a chicken farmer. And so she said that back in the day, they would get 60,000 baby chicks at a time in crates, which is <laughs> crazy. And she said she and her siblings would have to count the chickens that came in the crates to make sure that the counts were accurate and everything. But that's just crazy. And so, um, you know, everybody's into chickens and bees and why not? They're, they're animals that make us food, right? We get eggs from chickens and we get honey from bees. And how can we... Those are two great foods and they do it quietly and happily, I guess. And it's just really cool. So I'm all into baby chickens. That's what I'm all into this week. One last little bit of news. Uh, I showed you a couple videos ago the basket of red, white, and blue that I designed. I'm going to pause this, go grab it because I forgot and I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, Basket of Red, White, and Blue is the name of this new chart of mine. The charts are available through Hoffman Distributing and then Jen at Jen Stitching Niche and Julie at Gulf Coast Stitches both have the charts and the kits now. And um, so remember their links are going to be below. The kit is $25 retail and it comes with the 30 count Weeks Dye Works Linen the Weeks Dye Works threads that you need, and the Just Another Button Company button. And then these boxes, remember, are available at Hobby Lobby in the floral section, and the tutorial is on my Stitchy Tube channel. Just look for the tutorial on finishing basket of eggs. It's the same technique. It's a very easy finish, and it's cool because you can just sit it on a shelf. A lot of people are calling this Basket of Liberty. It's called Basket of Red, White, and Blue, but you call it what you want. Call it Basket of Doo-Doo, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And so that's that. Uh, the next one in the series, I'm not gonna tell you, there's another one that's coming out soon. And they're just kind of fun to do. It's they're very quick little projects to stitch and the finishing is very easy and I think they're just cute as can be. So look for those boxes. They run $8 at Hobby Lobby, but if you wait for the wood stuff to go on sale, you can get them for four bucks, which is super cheap finishing. That is all I have for this week. Um, I hope you guys are having a great Stitch Mania, whether you're stitching maniacally or not. Some of us are, some of us are not. A lot of you enjoyed meeting uh, Zero last time. He thanks you for all the accolades. I thought he might be around this time. I don't know where he's at, but he is very, very sweet, and it was nice of, nice of you all to, to talk about how much you enjoyed meeting good old Zero. So until next time, happy stitching. I hope your needles stay sharp or dull, as is your preference, and... Have a great time. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.